So my specific antibody constructs tackle two main problems in anti-cancer immunotherapy with autologous T cells. First of all, that there are very few anti-tumor reactive T cells in a patient with a tumor as with a multiple myeloma, and that often these few anti-tumor reactive T cells are dysfunctional and energic. And so the strategy really is to use activated, fully activated T cells that have a different specificity, for example, addressing it cells infected by a cytomegalovirus or by influenza virus and retarget these T cells to become tumor reactive. And so the bispecific antibodies are binding to a surface antigen on the T cells, mainly CD3, and with the other binding domain to a surface antigen on the tumor cell, which is mainly uh, in myeloma, BCMA. And by this, you can actually force a T cell that is specific for a virus-infected cell to target and lyse a tumor cell. And this allows to have a lot of T cells that are functionally active. You make the T cell activation independent of MHC class one and class two expression, which is important because often tumor cells like myeloma cells are downregulating MHC class one and class two, and you can uh, induce an efficient lysis of the myeloma cell. So there are different targets I already discussed, BCMA, which is the main target for all these redirection strategies like v specifics and CAR T cells. But there are other targets like GPR-C5D or FCRH5 or CD38 or CD138 or CD19. So there are quite a few of targets. And the, the major target that has been addressed using bispecific antibodies is really BCMA, which is quite homogeneously expressed on myeloma cells. And up to now, there is there are only very few reports about a loss of BCMA expression on the myeloma cell. So what typically happens if you infuse a bispecific antibody is that you get an expansion of these activated T cells or often effective memory T cells more from the CD8 than from the CD4 compartment. The first clinical trial that was done in multiple myeloma using a bispecific antibody or what they are also called T cell engaging antibodies was the AMG 420. This was a study which was performed by uh, several French and also some German centers um, and in this trial, patients with refractory relapse multiple myeloma having received at least two lines of prior therapy were included. They received up to five lines of therapy. Uh, it could be extended to 10 lines of therapy if they responded and had no major toxicity. And with uh, not a lot of toxicity, the uh, maximum tolerated dose was achieved with 400 micrograms per day. Now, the antibody had to be given as a continuous infusion, like the first bispecific antibody that is approved for clinical use worldwide, and that's plenatumumab, a CD3, CD19 bispecific antibody for a, a BALL uh, in the situation of a relapsed refractory disease or minimal residual disease positive ALL. And with these continuous infusion, we saw some issues. One was uh, portal vein infections, and two, this continuous infusion of these um, T cell engaging antibodies. There might have been some T cell exhaustion also for of infectious disease or inf infectious pathogen specific T cells. So we saw in two patients quite severe opportunistic infections, one of them an adenovirus infection, the other one an aspergillus infection. But, and that was really encouraging, um, the drug was very effective. So even in these heavily pretreated patients, we had 70% overall response rate at the MTD and 
complete remissions and also being MRD negative. And we have ongoing remissions for more than one year. Now, the further development of bi-specific antibodies changed. Um, they, they went away from these classical bite molecules, these very small molecules that have to be used as continuous infusion, but half-life extended bites or other formats of bi-specific antibodies were applied that allow weekly or even by or um, ap ap administration even every three weeks. So which makes it much easier for patients to actually uh, receive this treatment. And one of uh, these um, um, molecules was AMG701, which was also used in, in, in heavily pretreated patients, median of uh, <clears throat> six lines of, of prior therapy and uh, again, with a very low toxicity, very little cytokine release syndrome, very little severe neurotoxicity that was also seen in the AMG420 study, this bispecific antibody was applied and 83% of the patients responded. And again, uh, patients have been on the program now for more one, than one year and still responding. So this is very encouraging. But there are a lot of other bispecific antibodies really targeting BCMA and CD3. And the one that is really probably most advanced in the clinical um, development is Tekistamab, uh, which is an, another format of a bispecific antibody and that can be given as also intravenously, weekly, or by subcutaneous application. And again, quite well tolerated, no severe cytokine release syndrome, no severe uh, a neurotoxicity, and a high overall response rate of more than 70%. And again, ongoing responses for quite some time. And there's several other bi-specific antibodies targeting BCMA and CD3 now in the clinic, uh, or in the clinical evaluation in patients with advanced multiple myeloma. What we have also seen, and I think you have been the first one that actually described this problem, is that in patients that receive uh, redirected T cell therapy, either by bispecific antibodies or CAR T cells that are targeting exclusively BCMA, there can be a complete and irreversible loss of BCMA. So we had one patient who was treated with BCMA specific CAR T cells, and he had a very nice persistence of these CAR T cells. He had a beautiful uh, clearance of all the myeloma um, sites, and he also was shown um, to have also clearance in the bone marrow, clearance of the M protein, clearance of the soluble BCMA. And then suddenly, in spite of the persistence, of the BCMA-directed CAR T cells, the patient had a rapid rise in the M protein. And in the PET-CT, we found very early, actually before we found the M protein increase, a small lesion, and, and the, the lesion actually expanded very rapidly, and we found all the myeloma cells to have a complete loss, irreversible loss of BCMA due to a biallelic lesion in the chromosome 16, where this gene segment that was lost is actually coding for BCMA. It's a clear explanation for this irreversible BCMA loss. So it's important to have also other targets, and there are other targets like GPRC5D or an antibody that is targeting uh, the, the molecule FCRH5, and both these bispecific antibodies, one called Talketamab, which is targeting GPRC5D, and the other one, Kevostamab, they have been used in patients uh, with advanced multiple myeloma and also a few patients that actually were failing BCMA targeting therapy. And again, with a very low rate of severe cytokine release syndrome, very low rate of severe uh, neurotoxicity, they, they showed nice uh, overall response rates ranging between 53 and 69%. So we have also targets for uh, myeloma cells that are lacking BCMA expression. And if we look at the um, bispecific antibodies that are in clinical development, there are quite a few 
they seem to be um, uh, very well tolerated. And we know from the lymphoma field that patients actually beyond 80, even beyond 90, can be years can be treated with a biospecific antibody because of the low toxicity of these biospecific antibodies. So it's something that can really be applied. And we don't have a lot of patients in the very high dose levels, but at least the ones that received the highest dose level showed very nice responses. And in a few patients with ongoing responses for more than one year. So it's a great promise for patients uh, with uh, multiple myeloma. And I think the future, in the future, we will see that these bi-specific antibodies are moving to earlier lines of therapy in multiple myeloma. Uh, maybe high-risk patients already in first line or um, patients that have relapsing multiple myeloma, uh, definitely in the second line of the treatment.